the head of education here at the Litchfield Historical Society. Excited for this week's History Mystery, where we take objects in our collection and ask, what is this? All right, I'm pretty excited for this week's object. Some of my favorites. So without further ado, let's take a look. All right, what is this? Let me give you a better look. Take a look at the inside. Take a look on the inside. Yeah, it's a bucket. Good job. Uh, but this just isn't any bucket. This bucket has a really special purpose. So if you look at some of the characteristics, probably the most noticeable is that this bucket is made of leather. And leather is an important material because, you know, it's, uh, it's, it can hold a liquid, um, but it's not metal, so it doesn't conduct heat. And it's also not wood, so it doesn't burn. And that's really important because this bucket is a fire bucket. It was used in fighting fires. Now, before we had sort of organized fire companies, everyone in the community helped fight fires. So if a fire broke out, you would hear bells ringing, you would hear people shouting, and neighbors would be run, rushing out of their houses, carrying their fire buckets like this one. When they got to the scene of the fire, they would form bucket brigades, which were chains of people uh, passing these buckets from person to person full of water, and then of course, passing the empty buckets back towards the water source for more water. Um, of course, if you're throwing uh, buckets of water on like a really large house fire, um, you're, you're probably not going to extinguish it, uh, but you may slow its spread. You may be able to contain the fire to just the building that's currently burning, um, and even maybe give the owner some time to salvage some of their possessions. Now, beyond being such like a very important public safety tool, these buckets are also really quite beautiful. You'll notice, Sort of the intricate design on this fire bucket and also the fact that it has some initials. I have another example here that also shows you a name written on there. That may be backwards for you. Um, you can imagine sort of in the chaos of a fire that you're not going to be like keeping track of where your bucket is at all times. So it was important to put your name on it for when the fire had eventually burned out, all of the remaining buckets would be gathered and you could go and collect your bucket. This one here you see belongs to somebody whose initials were GCW. Does anybody have any guesses as who uh, GCW was? Um, if you were tuning in last week, uh, kind of coincidentally, um, I pulled the law books of George Catlin Woodruff. Same man, yep, so this is his it was his log book that we looked at last week, and this is his fire bucket that we're looking at today. This is a really great example of a fire bucket because not only does it have, um, you know, these really beautiful initials, but there's also this great design right in the center, this really patriotic um, decor of this eagle, this sort of a crest. Now, these fire buckets would often be hung sort of in a convenient place to grab them. And of course, that's going to be really the entrance to the house. So they would be hanging in plain sight for any visitors who came by, which meant that people put a lot of care and attention into what their fire buckets looked like. They would decorate them um, with sort of beautiful designs like this one, or even Troutbridge's, which just has his name. You can see how ornate that, um, that name was written. And I find the, the fact that they put so much um, care and attention into what their fire buckets look like really interesting because this is a tool, right? This is a utilitarian tool. This bucket is going to be used to fight a fire, which is going to be, you know, dirty and smoky and wet. Um, and yet it's done so elaborately because this is a tool that you need to have, that you may have to use. Um, hopefully you won't have to, but you have to be ready to, um, you know, when, when needed. 
Now, um, fire, of course, was um, a real, con real concern in the 18th and 19th centuries, far more than it is today. Think of all of the open flames people were dealing with on a daily basis. Candles, um, hearths for, for cooking and for warmth, um, forges for blacksmithing and metalworking, and the fact that everything is really made in wood um, meant that the danger of fires was really real for communities. Um, and you know, Litchfield wasn't, uh, you know, Litchfield experienced devastating fires itself. You'll notice in the photo behind me um, a photo of West Street from the, uh, the second half of the 19th century. And the first thing you'll notice in this photo, and we can post one in the comments as well, or a closer up of the photo. This um, West Street was entirely made of wooden buildings. And in June of 1886, a devastating fire broke out on the southeast corner of West Street behind what was the Mansion Hotel. Today, that's at the corner of the restaurant. And that fire basically leveled West Street. It burned all of the buildings you see in this photo, burned to the ground. Um, it was devastating for the town. It really was a huge financial loss. So when the town went to rebuild, they did so as quickly and as affordably as they could, which meant that they rebuilt in the cheapest material, which was wood. What happened was two years later, 1888, they had just finished rebuilding West Street when another fire broke out and again swept West Street, burning it, um, burning it completely. After that, the town said, you know what, no more, um, we're building in brick. Today, if you walk down West Street, um, you'll notice that all of those storefronts, those are brick buildings, and they all kind of look somewhat similar. That's because they're all built at the same time um, after those devastating fires. Another building made of brick, also built at that time, was Litchfield's very first firehouse in 1891. The firehouse was built on West Street, um, on the opposite side of the street from the green, and that building still stands. It's actually right next to um, the old jail. And since then, um, you know, our town has had uh, volunteer fire companies, um, not just in the center of Richfield, but also in our boroughs as well. And those fire companies really do more than just fight fire. They are first responders. Um, they're morale boosters um, with the convoy frequency in this time of year. And um, yeah, they're, uh, also they're our neighbors, right? Because just like, you know, George Woodruff and, and Trowbridge here with their fire buckets, the Litchfield Fire Company is still made of volunteers from our community. So from all of us at the Historical Society, we of course wanna say thank you um, to all of our local firefighters. Thank you for, um, you know, the, the convoys you've been doing and the work you always do to keep us safe. And we hope that you enjoyed sort of the, the look at Litchfield's very first uh, efforts for firefighting. Now, uh, that is our history mystery for today, but we will be back on Tuesday with our next Coffee with the Curator. Our director, Kathy Field, will be back to tell us the story of the Tapping Ridge House and Law School. So we hope that you join us for that. And we look forward to, um, to having you at all of our future programs. So from all of us here at the Historical Society, hope you have a great weekend. We miss you and goodbye.